Hello everyone, this is Humphrey again with Router Gods, and in this video we're going to talk about default routing. So, default routing is a kind of static routing that we've been doing in the past two videos with our simple two-router topology. And uh, basically what it is, is it is a route of last resort. So, if your router doesn't have a specific route to anywhere, it's then going to use the default route. So why would you use a default route? Well, in our last two videos we've been making static routes to the loopback zero and it's been pretty easy the command basically goes like this Let's see IP route you send it towards some network in our case we're going to send it to 20001 we're actually going to send it to the slash 24 so we're going to do 20002552552550 and then we're going to give it a next hop and the next hop is going to be this IP address 192.168.1.2. Okay, so we just did that so we can uh, refresh your memory. Well, static routes are are okay. They're they're actually they're not bad. You have to use them sometimes. But let's say in our two router topology that we started adding more loopbacks. So loopback one, loopback two, loopback three. You know, we're we're gonna get all these loopbacks, and uh, you're gonna have to make if you're gonna stick with static routes, you're gonna have to make a static route for each one and it's going to get uh, pretty ugly. Well, if you're looking at this topology, you gotta, you got to think to yourself, well, it's kind of silly that you would need to make two routes because there's only two routers. Router 0, the only way it can really send stuff is out to the right. And with router 1, the only way it can really send stuff is out to the left. So you can make a default route that does just that. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into router 0. I basically just have my IP addresses configured, my loopbacks configured, whoa. And a default route looks like a static route. In fact, it is a type of static route. So you start off the command just, just the same. You have to go into uh, conf t, then do IP route, 0000, zero, 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 zero so four zeros, zero, 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 zero. Uh, some people like to say IP route, quad zero, quad zero, IP route, all zeros, um, you know, sort of depends. And then the next hop is going to be 192.168.1.2. Boom. So what exactly did you just do? Well, what you said is, I want to make a route, and all these zeros means I don't care what the IP address is, I'm just going to send it to 1.2. Let's see how that looks up looks like in your IP routing table. We're going to exit out of there. Do a show IP route. We've got our static route to the loopback. That's not a problem. We've got our connected routes. And uh, down at the bottom, what we have is a S. You see a star there. And then what you see is 0000 slash 0 via 192.168.1.2. So you're going to chuck everything to 1.2. Well, let's see if this is going to work. And for us to do that, we're going to go back on router 1. And let's make all of those extra loopbacks. I'm going to do this really quick. Oops. Interface loopback 1. It's good practice. So just follow along with me. IP address 3001. 255.255.255.0 int loopback 2 IP address 4001.255.255.255.0 and finally int loopback 3 IP address 50.0.0.1.255.255.255.1 or 0 Exit, write mem, and let's see if we can ping it. And you're going to notice something interesting. It's not actually going to ping. Well, we'll do one hop at a time. We'll ping the other the next hop interface. Everything comes back well. That's pretty easy. Let's see if we can ping loop back one, 3001. Hey, look at that. We can ping 3001. Let's see if we can ping 30, uh, 40. 001, we can ping 4001, 
And let's see if we can ping uh, 50.001. Bam, hey, 50.001, so it looks like it works. But what you have to realize here is we are pinging from this interface. Let's see if we can make this work if we ping from the loopback interface over here. So we're simulating a computer here trying to ping the loopbacks. So let's do just ping, protocols IP, target IP address 30001, repeat count 5, datagrams, OK, OK, extended commands, yes. I'm going to do extended ping, and you are pinging from 10001, and everything else is default. And it's going to die out. Kind of interesting, right? What we have to do on the other side, we've got to set a default route back. Because what's happening is it's dying out. It's The ping's getting over here. It's getting to 30.001. It's, you can think of it as it's going back into router 1. Now it has to look up the routing table, and it doesn't have anything for 10.001. You can verify that by going to router 1, show IP route. We have only connected routes. We don't have anything to the 10 network. Okay, so let's make a default route going back. IP route 0000000. Our next hop is 192.168.1.1. Let's move this console window out of the way so we can see it. So it's 192.168.1.1. Enter right there. Always verify, do show IP route. And you can see our static route at the very bottom, the static default route right there. Just for kicks, we're going to ping our next hop from router 1. Definitely works. All right. So now what we do is we go back to router 0. Going to hit the up arrow. Uh, actually, we're just going to do ping. IP address. So we are going to do, uh, let's do 50.0.0.1. Enter a couple times, extended command, yes. Source address 10.0.0.1. Type of service, all that good stuff. We hit enter. And we have a success. Uh, so that's good. But there's also a bad thing. We've also created a potential loop. Anytime you have default routes at both ends, what's going to happen is, Let's say you ping an address that's not in uh, one of the one of the interfaces. So let's say we pinged uh, 60.0.0.1. Well, the ping is going to go over here to this router. This router is not going to find an IP address for it. Well, what's the last thing in the in the routing table? It's a default route. It's going to send it back here, and then this router is going to send it back here, and it's going to go back and forth, back and forth until the TTL is down to zero. So it's going to just make an almost infinite loop. So that's something you have to watch out for when you're doing default routes. If you have default routes at both ends, you have a potential for a loop. But other than that, uh, they're sometimes very necessary. All right, that's it for this video. I'm Humphrey with Router Gods. Thanks for watching.